for the MPP to come and settle the billions of cities of arrears? Is it his decision to build two flyovers, Kaswa and Kwame Nkrumah Cycle, at a cost much higher than what the NPP is using to build four big flyovers, Tema, Pokwase, Obechebilamte, and Tamale? We have seen candidate John Mohammed's strategy, and we have read the strategy very well as a party. He's comparing eight years of the NDC, that's the Mills Mahama era, Mahama and Misatha era, to the less than four years of the NPP under His Excellency Nana Adodankwe Kufuadu and his most able vice president, Al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Candidate Mahama has decided that just as he did in 2016 and failed, for 2020, he's once again going to use infrastructure as his biggest achievement to campaign on. This means that he's using everything, including contracts awarded under President John Ajekum Kufo, like the many district hospitals up and down the country, and executed under President John, under President John Mills, and other contracts like the University of Ghana Medical Center, started under Mills and completed under Ekufuado, and claiming all of them as he's doing, and he's alone. We have no problem with that, because we know that the evidence will show that the NPP under Ekufuado has achieved more in providing infrastructure for communities up and down the country under just four years. John Mahama and his NDC, we simply cannot understand them. We have the evidence, and we shall be sharing them with the Ghanaian people very soon, and they won't be in a green book. This will be a verifiable project. Under free SHS, candidate Mahama now claims that in the unlikely event that he is elected president again, he will implement a Kufuado's free SHS program. And ladies and gentlemen, how do you implement a program that is already running? Candidate Mahama, why now? You were in power as vice president and head of the economic management team for almost four years and as President of the Republic, also for another four years and some four months. In total, you have been in power for eight good years, yet, Mr. Mahama, you failed to implement the free SHS. Your endorsement of free SHS is therefore from your own record, not an honest position to take, which is simply then a big lie. Your current running mate, an educationist, who was your Minister of Education, Yet, together, you failed to implement free SHS. President Ekufuado pledged way back in 2008 that he would implement the free SHS so that every young Ghanaian would have the opportunity to have secondary education, no matter how poor their family background is. You opposed it. You had the opportunity for eight years, yet you failed to implement the free SHS. We are told by our NDC friends and their communicators that it was not up to the education minister, Nano Pokwajman, to introduce the free SHS, and that it was a cabinet decision not to do so. Well, candidate Mahama, you were the president. It was your cabinet. You were in charge, yet you failed to implement the free SHS program. And then, Along came President Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, Osiadieyo. Within eight months, Mahama had eight years, but for Nanado, within eight months, he implemented the flagship free SHS program. <laughs> and now, over 1.2 million young people, mostly from underprivileged homes, have had the secondary education. 400,000 of them who met the qualifying mark we still have been left out, if not for the introduction of the innovative double track system, which Mahama opposed. So having seen that it's possible because President Ekufuado has implemented it, John Dramani Mahama now says that if he's elected, he will implement free SHS. But the thing has been implemented already. Should Ghanaians replace the man who dreamed it, believed it, and delivered it? for one who never believed it, ridiculed it, and fought against it. I'm sure if you ask a few 
screenshot, we can go to it. Yes. This was his position earlier. Free SHS would collapse Ghana's education system. This was killed from the Ghana web. And then down memory lane, I brought free SHS, Mahama claims. Once again, Candid Mahama wants to associate with success, but he doesn't know how to solve the problems to achieve the success story. He has no blueprint for achieving the success he dreams of. The concept of free SHS for 1.2 million teenagers and growing is too complex for the NDC candidate and the party. Between the two main candidates, it is obvious which one truly cares for the youth of Ghana and therefore the country's future. Definitely, it is Nanado Danko Ekufuado. On the teacher training and nursing training allowances, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ghanaians, on September 9, 2016, candidate Mahama speaking at a forum at the University of Cape Coast said, and I quote, for purposes of partisan politics, you have your political opponent come and say, when we come back, we will restore training allowances to colleges of education. For me, it is better to lose the election on principle than to win it on falsehood. I'm sure you have the evidence there, uh, one from the city newsroom and one from Graphic Online. As we all know, the president of CID and Anado Danko Ekufuado has done what he promised he will do. He restored teacher training and nursing training allowances in his first year in office. And now candidate Mahama says that if he is elected, he will do what he said was clear he couldn't do as president. This cannot be a man who will stand for the same principle he stood in 2016, and definitely cannot be a man of conviction to join us to stand the test of time. I'm sure you have some of these online stories that you can easily also cross-check. Once again, Mr. Mahama and the NDC wants to associate with success, but he doesn't know and they don't know how to get it done. Let me take you to the Ghana card. In yet another instance of indecision, Candid Mahama led the NDC in a campaign to reject the Ghana card issued by the National Identification Authority. Then he and his party chairman turned around to blame the National Identification Authority for deliberately issuing fewer Ghana cars in NDC strongholds, which was a blatant false allegation. Anyway, as we have seen from the evidence of even spread of those who used the NIA card for the voter registration. In the end, when he realized that Ghanaians were registering and acquiring the Ghana card, he and his wife went quietly to register for the Ghana card. So you can see John Mahama Lee's campaign to reject Ghana cards on the screen. Then in another breath on Peace FM Online, ex-president Mahama and wife grab Ghana card after NDC U10. Yet again, candidate Mahama wants to associate with Sasser, but he doesn't know how to get things done. He was in office for eight years, yet he did not implement the Ghana card project, which was started by then visionary president John Ajekum Kufo. Another phantom $10 billion infrastructure promise and project. Candidate Mahama claims that he will inject $10 billion into infrastructure and use that to create jobs. He said this in a knee-jerk reaction to a Kufuado's 100 billion CARES program to help Ghana's economy recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. It appears Mr. Mahama is very fond of the figure 10 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, you must dismiss this as a total pipe down for three reasons. First of all, in 2013, working with his very good friend, Willana Gambri, amidst the great fanfare, amidst the brass band, accompanied by an international superstar, Candid Mahama went to Kassot for the $10 billion Hope City project here in Greater Accra. He promised thousands of jobs, 
in the process of constructing multiple skyscrapers comprising businesses, shopping malls, and residential facilities. Not knowing they had not even acquired the land for the project. <laughs> Secondly, when candidate Bahama says he's going to build projects, the Ghanaian people should be extremely careful and should be worried because of the inflated cost of these projects. He is not interested in the outcome and the impact of the project on the lives of the people. He is not interested in the value for money. So when candidate Mahama says he's going to invest $10 billion in infrastructure, Ghanaians must treat it not as a promise, but as a threat. Not as an infrastructural solution, but a financial scandal. It must not draw you towards him. Rather, you must run away, borrow his legs, and run away with it. Thirdly, candidate Mahama says that his $10 billion pipe dream will create 1 million jobs. Mahama does not care about creating jobs for young people. In November 2016, candidate Mahama told unemployed graduates who were disillusioned, dispirited, and disenchanted that he is not a magician to put money in people's pocket. His former private sector development minister, the Honorable Rashid Pelpu, said that young people should go into the forest and collect stones and come and sell by the roadside. That is another form of job creation. They should also cut grass and come and sell. This was Mahama's job creation strategy. If you have a video, you can help. We are aware that there are many who want to be teachers but cannot be because we are not employing anymore. You are aware of many of the nurses who have been trained and have been bonded cannot go and work in any private institution and yet the government cannot absorb them. So the skills are there. The opportunities you say are there, maybe what is not available? No, they are available, but there are some inadequacies in our system, which we have to admit to. You know, for example, if the, 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 the situation you have just described, that the, you know, they are bonded and should work with governments, and they would have wished to go and work somewhere, mm. you know. It's they would wish to work with government. Mm. There's no space in government's uh, hospitals. Yes, yes. So they are sitting at home, and yet they cannot go anywhere else. No, they, they, I, I believe that can be resolved. In other words, um, let me address the president's point he made, which is largely misunderstood. Mm. Because of the varied situations we find ourselves, the economic opportunities that are available in the private sector particularly, Lots of people could have gone into those areas, but one, the skill to know that these places exist, the skill to apply to take advantage of it may be lacking, and it's a gap we will seek to address. So when you say As the private sector, you are in you know, this area of uh, uh, public-private partnerships at the government. What, what exists? I want to be able to tell. I want my viewer or listener who doesn't have a job and perhaps has a skill and is unaware of the opportunity the president is talking about to be able to quickly access them what are the opportunities within the private sector you are referring to um, i'm referring to situations where you go to a community and then you find that the community lacks a certain um, good and you can apply your skill knowledge or even effort in providing that good. I, I was given a practical example by uh, somebody who came forward to me and was trying to help upgrade the knowledge of our people so they can take advantages as we are talking about. Mm. And he cited two examples. That even, even in Accra here, somebody goes to where there are grasses. You are not just look for a cutlass or a sickle. Cut the grasses, put it in a sack, put it by the wayside for people who breed animals. Every single day, if you do that, somebody will come and buy. You, haven't, you don't need capital enough to do that. Mm. But you need if, some skill, if, if, and these skills are, are unavailable. Yeah, I'm talking about those of... who have that skill. Okay. And he said, okay, even in outskirt communities in Accra, go into the bush. Every stone you find, just take, lift them, 
put in the bucket, come and pour it there. Every day do that for one month. You will have two trips or three trips of stone. You don't need any skill to do that. Mm. So and this still, opportunity too is there. And there are lots uh, of people who are... The president says you don't have the skills. Yeah. No, but you say you he, don't he need was, skills for no, this. He was the examples that, you have given, you don't seem to need any skills for Yeah, that. you don't seem to need any skill. You mm. just need to know that these things are available for you. And these you know? are the creation of the government. Yes. So... Ladies and gentlemen, this is evidence-based. The problem with candidate Mahama is that every Ghanaian knows him because he was vice president and then president for a total of eight good years. Whatever he could have offered, whatever he could have implemented, whatever he had to give, whatever he could have done, he had eight years to do so. But he failed. That is why he suffered the heaviest defeat in any election in Ghana's history because he's the worst leader that we ever had. And Ghanaians have not forgotten. In fact, he gave the worst economic growth since 1990. The facts are there. It is therefore not surprising that former President Jerry John Rawlings, the founder of the NDC, himself, the man who gave Mr. Mahama his only ministerial opportunities, says he did not vote for his own candidate in 2016. Not only that, he will not say if he will vote for this candidate in 2020. We all heard him on Asasi Radio last month. In fact, former President Rawlings believes that candidate Mahama's main target is 2024. Candidate Mahama himself let the card out of the bag when in Savannah last week, he referred to eight years of President Ekufuado as if 2020 is just a trial run for 2024 for him. The NDC must wake up to Mr. Mahama's plans. He does not mean well for the NDC, but that is their own house matter. If it were for the interest of the NDC, we are confident he could have also used his resources and money to support a winnable candidate for their future. But he chose to run on the strength of an abysmal record. If our friends in the NDC were not convinced a few weeks ago that Mr. Mohammed's real plan, as revealed by the founder, Jay Rollins, to close the space for a contest for him to prepare for 2024, then they should be in no doubt now. J.J. Rollins saw the script early. He read the script. He memorized the script and meditated on the script. Candidate Mahama is not interested in a succession plan for the NDC. And this is something the rank and file of the party must wake up to. Candidate Mahama is all about John Mahama. He is not in, he's not in the race for the NDC and certainly not for you and I. Ghana needs a selfless, bold, decisive, caring, and visionary leader to carry us forward at a time like this. That leader, ladies and gentlemen, is Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. Four more to do more for you and I. A man of vision, a man of courage, a compassionate, caring, thoughtful, and matured man. NPP is ready for December 7, 2020. For Ghanaian voters who came out in their numbers to register, the real show of your civic duty is to show up in your numbers on Monday, December 7, to vote. Come out, observe all the protocols, and vote for your welfare. On the ballot paper, vote for your well-being. On the ballot paper, vote for the future of your children. On the ballot paper, vote for your community. On the ballot paper, vote for your country, Ghana. Vote for the NPP and Anado Dankwa to protect and build on our gains as a party and as a nation. And our nation. On December 7th, on the ballot paper, make a strong decision and choose hope over hopelessness. Make a bold decision and choose competence over incompetence. On the ballot paper, choose prosperity over poverty. And again, choose strong leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, on December 7th, vote Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado.
for four more for Nana. Panel with me, Daniel Tazi. We just heard Samuel Oku, the national organizer of the MPP, deliver what he believes is uh, enough reason for to convince the Ghanaian that um, President Ekufado is the best man to lead the nation in the coming year um, to win this, this year's election, of course. A few points that he raised. Uh, the free SHS is too complex for the NDC and Mr. Mahama to implement. That's one of the points that he raised. Um, I think that we'll go back um, when we have... Right, we understand that Mr. Iwoku is currently giving a tree summary of what he just said in English. Right, President Ekufadu restored teacher training allowances, says that Mr. Mahama, he gave a quote that Mr. Mahama gave um, sometime in 2016 that it is not possible for someone to do so. He says Mr. Mahama is not a man of conviction. In fact, in that quote, um, Mr. Mahama said that he'd rather lose the election on principle than deceive the Ghanaian public. Uh, Samioku went on to say how um, Mr. Mahama registered for the Ghana card as a leading a campaign against it. He also said um, Mr. John Mahama's $10 billion infrastructure project promise is a knee-jerk reaction to um, the $100 billion Ghana City Cares project, which Ken Oforiata Finance Minister announced during the media budget review. He also says that in reference to this $10 billion infrastructure project, it's similar to the Hope City project, which was launched sometime when Mr. Mahama was in power as president. And um, at the time that project was launched, Sami Oku says that the land had not been acquired for the project yet. He also went on to say this $10 billion infrastructure plan is a pipe dream. That's how he described it. And he said it's an insult to Ghanaians. He then um, gave an interesting analysis of how the founder of the NDC, former president, Jerry John Rawlings, uh, has not stated whether or not he will be able he will vote for John Dramani Mahama in the coming elections. He describes this as proof that um, former President Rawlings does not support the NDC's flag bearer and has no faith in him. Of course, he named a number of other reasons why he believes President Ekufado is the best man to lead the country in December 2020. And now, of course, you would expect this from him. He's national organizer of the NPP. And you will expect the debate to rage. Earlier today, we had um, a news conference from the NDC, more focused on the voter registration exercise, where LBC Free Ankara, the director of elections, um, called for an audit of the current voter register, which was just uh, put together by the Electoral Commission. Expect more analysis when the polls begins in just a few minutes. My name is Daniel Dazi.